Hello YouTube, I hope you're having a fantastic day. In today's video, I want to talk about the PowerPoint 2016 exam, and we're going to look at specifically the domain called Create and Manage Presentations. Overall, this accommodates for 30 to 35% of the overall exam. I'll go ahead and throw up a graphic so you can look at the domain with me. In this domain is seven different subdomains. Because of the amount of content that's in this domain, this video is going to be broken up into two sections. This is the second video, and in this video, we're going to talk about order and group slides, change presentation options and views, configure a presentation for print, and configure and present a slideshow. Let's go ahead and jump into PowerPoint. We are looking at the PowerPoint 2016 exam, and we're looking at the domain called Create and Manage Presentations. Specifically, we're looking at the subdomain called Order and Group Slides. The first thing it tells us that we need to be able to do is to create sections. There are a few ways to do this. What you'll want to do is click above the slide that you're looking to create a section for. And notice if you look very carefully, a line between slide one and two where I clicked. To create a section, we're on the Home tab, we're on the Slides group. I'm going to click the Section drop-down, and I'm going to click Add Section. And notice it added a section called Untitled Section. To rename this section, I'm on the Home tab, I'm in the Slides group, I'm going to click the Section drop-down, and I'm going to select Rename Section. I'll go ahead and just call this Section 1, and click Rename. An easier way to create a section is put your cursor above the section you're looking to create and you can right click and click add section. Right click on that untitled section and select rename section. We'll call this section two. The domain tells us that we need to be able to modify the slide order. To do that, all we need to do is click the slide that we're looking to move or slides. If you need to select multiple ones, you can use shift if they're in the same order or if they're in multiple locations, you can hold the control key as you select the other slide. And in order to move it with those selected, you can just click and drag to where you want it to be. And it went ahead and put those slides in this section. We're looking at the subdomain called change presentation options and views. The first thing that this domain tells us that we need to be able to do is to change the slide size. We'll need to go to the design tab. And we're in the customize group. I'm going to click the slide size drop down. And immediately I have the standard and the widescreen settings. On the exam, you might be asked to select those or you could be given specific dimensions to choose from. So we'll select custom slide size. And this section is where you would key in those specific dimensions. You also have the option to change the slide from landscape to portrait, and you can change the notes, handouts, and outline section here. For this, we'll go ahead and click this drop down, and we'll select widescreen here. We'll click OK. This window is important because it's asking us if we want to maximize or ensure the fit. On the exam, you could be directed to choose either, so you want to make sure that you read the question carefully. For this, we'll go ahead and select ensure fit. The next thing it tells us that we should be able to do is to change the views of a presentation. Now you can make some of these changes here in the status bar, or you can go to the view tab at the top and in our presentation views. By default, we're in normal, but we could select outline view, slide sorter, notes page, or reading view. To exit this, you can just hit the escape key on your keyboard, and that puts us back in the notes page. I'll click normal to bring us back to our original view. And the final thing that it tells us that we should be able to do is set file properties. We're gonna click file and our properties are listed here. If you don't see a property listed that you need, if you click show all properties, it will expand this list. And this gives you the option of adding metadata to the document. For example, I can add a title by just clicking in that section and you can type whatever you need to. For this, I'll type in PowerPoint. Something that I notice my students tend to do is add a space after the text that they've typed. If you do that, you'll be marked wrong. When you're done typing, you'll just want to click out of it to set that property. And when you're done, you can click the back arrow to exit the backstage view. We're looking at the subdomain called 
configure a presentation for print, the first thing it tells us is that we need to be able to print all or part of a presentation. Before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and select the last three slides of this presentation by clicking on five, holding my shift key down and selecting seven. And now I have slides five, six, and seven selected. Now I'm going to click file, print, and to change my slides that are going to be printed, I'm going to look here in the settings and currently it has print all slides. But if I click this to open it up, I can click print selection. And notice it only has three slides it's going to print. And those are the three slides I selected before I clicked file print. I can also click print current slide, which is the slide that I have selected first. I can select a custom range, or if I wanted to print specific sections that I've created, I could do that. So if I select section two, it says I have six slides that I can print. It tells us that we should be able to print notes pages and print handouts. So I'm in the settings section again, and currently I have full page slides selected. But if I click this drop down, I can click notes pages, outline. For my handouts, I can change it from one slide to two slides or three. There's a lot to choose from. You should also be familiar with these settings. This domain tells us that we should also be able to print in color, grayscale, or black and white. Down here, it currently has color selected, but if I click this open, I can change it to grayscale or just black and white by just clicking on any of those settings. We're looking at the subdomain called configure and present a slideshow. The first thing it tells us that we need to be able to do is to create a custom slideshow. We'll want to go to the slideshow tab at the top. We're in the start slideshow. And what I want to do is click the custom slideshow drop down and click custom shows. We'll click new in this dialog box. We have the option of changing the slideshow name. For this, we'll put in the title PowerPoint example. On the left hand side, I have all of my slides in this presentation. And I have the option of choosing the slides that I want to bring into this presentation. Once I've selected the slides, I want to click the add button. Now that I've brought them over, I have the option of moving them within the presentation. So I can make that for slide number two, and I can make this host family slide number four. I also can delete a slide that I didn't want to bring in. Once I'm done, I'll click OK. And now that is one of my slideshows. We'll close out of this. The next thing it tells us that we need to be able to do is to configure slideshow options. We're on the slideshow tab again. We're in the setup group and I'm going to click the setup slideshow. You should be familiar with this window. You very well could be asked questions about this. You have the option of changing it by if presented by a speaker or it can be browsed by an individual or even be browsed at a kiosk. We'll select that in your show options. Depending on what you choose up here, you can loop continuously until the escape buttons hit. You also have the option to show without narration or animation. You also have the show slides here. Advanced slides is something you could be asked manually or using time ends if it's preset. So be familiar with this window. This domain also tells us that we need to be able to rehearse slideshow timings. We're on the slideshow tab. We're in the setup group. What I want to click here is rehearse timings. That's going to open up this presentation in presentation mode. And what I need to do now is just click through this. And if you look in the left hand corner of my screen, it's recording everything I'm doing. When I'm done, it tells me the total time of the slideshow was 19 seconds. And it's asking us, do you want to save the new slide timing? We'll click yes. And the last thing that this subdomain tells us that we need to be able to do is to present a slideshow by using presenter view. On my computer currently, I only have one monitor set up. So I'm going to go ahead and put a screenshot of what it would look like if you had two monitors set up. This is probably not something that you need to worry about for this exam, just because it's just a feature within presenting the slideshow. But this is what it would look like if you had two monitors set up.